So I know I am not going to be the only person who has ever worked at a hotel who will share the sentiment that third parties suck. Now, if you haven't worked in the hotel industry, you may be asking, but what's so wrong with these third parties? I book through Kayak or Booking.com or Trivago or wherever all the time and I never have a problem. They're not that bad. And then you also may be thinking, well, if third party websites are all that bad, then why do hotels keep selling through them, huh? Why wouldn't they cut all ties and say that you have to book directly with the hotel if these third party websites suck so much? Here's the thing, hotels just want money. <laughs> if a room goes unsold for the night, that's money that they've lost. You can't go back in time and resell that room. So a lot of times what hotels will do is if they're expecting a lower occupancy, they will put more rooms on these third party websites in hopes of just getting a little bit of money for that room. Here's the thing, if all you're looking for is a roof over your head, book to the third party, get the cheaper rate. I do the same. Understand that when you're booking these rooms through these third parties, Essentially, what you're saying is that you are buying a room that the hotel itself couldn't directly sell. So generally what happens is you end up with a poor view or a location next to an elevator or the ice maker or something about a room that makes it less desirable. Because here's the thing, as long as I've worked in hotels, I was always told to prioritize the people who book direct over the people who book third party. Generally, unless you shell out a bit more money to the third party to guarantee a better view or an ideal location, even if the third party tells you that you've booked a pool view, you probably didn't. Now, another reason that these third parties can really suck sometimes is that they don't always give accurate information. The hotels don't run these third party websites. All they can do is submit a form to them that says, hey, your information's wrong, please change it. And then it's kind of just up to the third party whether or not they do that. I have seen third parties forget to update their websites about pool closures, change in valet rates, et cetera, et cetera. And then guests come in, they say, well, this is what it says on the website. And we sit there and we awkwardly say, well, that's not what it says on our website. You're looking at schmooking.com our website has the right information. We've told them to update their information countless times and they haven't. And then it becomes this whole awkward back and forth of, well, then why does it say that? It should say that you guys need to honor it because it says that. And it's like, well, you, did you check our website? Well, why should I check your website when I'm booking through this one? Because ours is ours. Just really such a headache. And then there's also the little matter of payments. Most hotels have a policy that you need to put a credit card or sometimes cash. I've always worked for hotels where you have to actually put a card on file, but you need to put a deposit down for incidentals. And most of the time us hotel workers tell a half truth that that incidental hold is for if you wanna charge anything back to the room from the restaurant or the bar or the sundry shop. The whole truth is that it's for that and also if you mess up the room. If the room is smoked in, if something is stolen, if something is broken, then hotels will generally take between, I've seen 15 to $100 a night in a hold to cover any damages. I cannot tell you how many times I have asked people if I can please get a credit card on file for incidentals and they've told me to just use the credit card that they booked their reservation through but they booked it through a third party. So we don't have their credit card number. And then they look at me like an owl Ooh. in headlights and say, well, I don't have a card. And I have to tell them that I can't check them in because as mentioned in the video, generally what happens is you pay the third party, they take your credit card information, they charge it, and then they generate their own credit card number and book directly to the hotel with their credit card, which usually only has just enough money for the cost of the hotel. Which is why if something goes wrong in the room and you want monetary compensation or you need to cancel your reservation, 
the hotel can't be the one to directly refund you because we don't have your credit card number. Which is why if you've ever had a problem with the hotel and you booked third party, you might have had to pull some teeth to get any type of real compensation because generally what we are told to do is if there is an issue with the room and it's third party, we don't refund any money. We might just offer a room change or a voucher for a free meal or a free drink or something. But rarely do you actually get any cash back for an issue. Sometimes that compensation will be a credit on your folio. So for example, let's say that you couldn't sleep all night because there was a creaky pipe in your room. If you would book directly for the hotel, you might have been given half the night's rate back onto your credit card just as cash. But since you booked through third party, we're going to give you a hundred dollar credit on your folio so you can go and you can charge back some meal at the restaurant or merchandise or whatever, which usually works fine for most people. But what if you didn't plan to eat at our restaurants or go to our bar or buy anything from our shop. Now here's a question for you. Are you sure that third party is really that much cheaper? A lot of people will just go and they'll immediately look up the hotel rate through a third party and never even check the hotel's actual website. Or they do and they see, hmm, the hotel is selling its room at $200 a night with a refundable cancellation policy 24 hours in advance. Ooh, but this third party says that they're selling the room for $160 a night. That's a better deal. Purchase. But did you notice that the second you told it you didn't just want one night, but you wanted three nights, suddenly the math is doing all these weird things and there's all these weird fees that are happening and huh, that's odd. I guess now the rooms are like 240 a night on this third party website. Well, it probably would have been more expensive through the hotel anyway, so it's still a better deal, right? Probably not, because generally, especially with the major chains, what you see on the website is about how much it's gonna cost with maybe another 10 bucks added for taxes and fees, not another 50 to 60 to 100. You better hope that no plans go wrong because that third party says that if you don't give them a week's notice, they are not giving you a penny of a refund. So all that to say, book with third parties at your own risk. I highly encourage you to make sure that your plans are set in stone and that you are fully aware of all the nitty gritty details. And if you really want peace of mind, book directly with the hotel. Call them, say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. And then you have a much better chance of getting what you want. If you're wondering who the heck I am, my name is Jessica Vanell. I have seven plus years of hotel experience under my belt. I've worked in convention hotels, luxury hotels, and boutique hotels. So I've, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. <laughs> If you've made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them and I will do my best to get back to you about it. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.